We're getting back to who we really are. Let's get into it for the week beginning March 2nd, 2020. Hello everybody, it's Michelle Patterson here with Angel Souls and this is our weekly angelic message for the week beginning March 2nd, 2020. Just a heads up, I don't know why, but I feel like I want to record the next week as well. So you're going to see the same look <laughs> next week. Um, I don't know why, we'll see as I get into it. So the buzzword for the March 2nd week would be authenticity. Now we have talked about this before, it's not new, <laughs> but sometimes we have to come back to these ideas and they're even saying now you sort of dip out, you figure out what that means for you and then you recenter and get ready to take the next chapter. So I think that's what we're doing right now. We, you guys have probably done a lot of shadow work. I know I have. Um, I've had some really beautiful and profound breakthroughs, uh, and again, like most of you, I've experienced the ups, the downs. There's been a lot of physical things going on. I always know that I'm kind of going through a breakthrough when I start, the, the migraines will really start getting, uh, you know, kind of set off. <laughs> and I, that's just how my body responds to that. Now for you, who knows? I mean, comment down below how you, you know, kind of physically start to have an expression of having come through a sort of rite of passage. Okay. Now, if some of you say, I never have that symptom. <laughs> Yay. You are so lucky, <laughs> but it doesn't, you know, it doesn't always work out that way because I think some of the, if you want to see it as toxic energy, toxic emotions, I think it's more emotions, toxic emotions, which have an energy start to come up to the surface and it's hitting up on your physicality, right? So I've been going through that a lot. I know a lot of you have been probably experiencing that, but a lot of us right now, 2020, as I said before, and in all of your signs, I did do a 2020 year overview for every sign. So go check that out on my channel. This is a year of disruption, of change, of shaking things up, of getting our attention. And it is teaching us to be very resourceful, right? So now it's time to take that resourcefulness and bring it into center and go, well, who am I now? So this is going to require of us to let go of any sense of what we think our identity is, right? We love as humans, we box ourselves in to a title, to a way of life, to a look, <laughs> right? How we present ourselves, how we decorate ourselves. I'm on a neon kick. I don't know about y'all, but like uh, the designers did not tell me that this was fashion forward and I do not care. Okay. I get into my neon when I feel like neon. Okay. <laughs> But you can be seeing that a lot on my channel because I, I bought a bunch of sweaters. Um, anyway, <laughs> but you know, even down to how we present ourselves, this is, there's going to be a shift around this. And you know, for everybody, it's going to be different. But who are you really? Not who you think you should be. We talk about this all the time. And this also includes people who are just trying to seem spiritual so that they seem powerful. Now, if you really are very mystical, you know, if you have a lot of Scorpio energy, <laughs> you know, and that's your authentic form of expression, great. But if you try to come off as mystical so that you can scare people into getting your services, I see you, you know me, I, I love you, but I see you, okay? Or, you know what I'm saying? Like, make sure whatever your self-expression is that it's authentic to who you actually are, <laughs> right? And that for a lot of people, you know, you know, let's have a little compassion here. I know I was just saying, if you're trying to look mystical, but if we can open up our compassion, if you are trying to hide behind an image or if you're hiding behind a job or whatever you feel like your life duties are, okay? If you're hiding in that way, why? So some of us are, you know, it's a lifelong thing to be on this path of figuring out <laughs> who we are, why we are, and all of that. But this way, give yourself a chance to really connect into what lights up your heart. What makes you feel comfortable? I'm a 43 year old woman and I bought, like I was just saying, like some neon stuff. And it's like stuff that reminds me <laughs> of when I was like eight, nine years old. And I'm not wearing it because I feel like I need to run back to childhood. I'm wearing it because I'm like, hey, I see potential here. This color makes me happy. Why am I not allowing myself to wear this or wear a pink eyeshadow? Because it's supposed to be for the 20-somethings. 
who said, who made those rules? And if somebody made those rules, mama's here to break them, okay? Because <laughs> I, I, we ain't doing that. You know, you do what makes you happy and don't listen to anybody else, all right? So in order for us to find our authentic voice, our authentic expression, you need to give yourself some genuine you time. Oh yes, oh yes. And what does that you time look like for you? For me, I cannot wait until our trails are better. They've been so muddy and icy. But my authentic time is getting out into nature, going for a hike. I'm one of those mid-level hikers, so I'm not out to prove anything. I'm out to connect. <laughs> I'm not out to conquer nature. I wanna feel her all around me and pulsing through me. So I enjoy the scenery. I, you know, I have to watch out for cyclists everywhere, but um, you know, I try to be very meditative and you know, all of those kinds of things. That's where I can find me. I can also find me through I don't know, exploring. I, I don't know how else to put that. Uh, so I will just go out and try a new restaurant or I will, actually when I'm done here, I'm gonna go to a coffee house that I haven't been to here in town. And when the weather gets nice, I'm gonna go explore even more because it helps me realize what lights me up, right? So whatever it is for you this week, you need to find it. If you associate with a group, look at your labels. That's what they're saying. Look at your labels this week, even write them down. I'm a vegan, I'm a vegetarian, I'm this political aff affiliation, I'm this religion, I'm a mom, I'm a sister, I'm a, you know, what all those labels, okay? Now, some of them are beautiful, beautiful labels, and some of them have a dead energy around them. What'd she just say? Some of the labels that we put upon ourselves have a dead energy, which is say no energy, okay? <laughs> I don't know why I didn't just say that. Uh, so which ones are actually true to you and mean something to you? Now, for everybody, it's going to be different, right? Because your religion, for example, if you d define yourself as Catholic and that's meaningful to you, then it has an energy to it. If it helps you feel connected, that's beautiful. And everybody in the spiritual community, you need to calm down about religion. I mean it. Okay. I mean it. I cannot tell you how many times I'll see a comment in the section, you know, down below and someone's like, oh, I was with you until you said, Holy Spirit. And then I was out. That's your shadow. You know, you, there's some kind of pain that's, it's, it's flaring something up in you. You need to look at that with all love and respect. But what I'm getting at here is getting rid of of what doesn't help you, <laughs> right? Um, if you are somebody who used to always get bullied, right? You might still have some bit of a trigger in you, I know I do, uh, that sees yourself as someone who can be preyed upon. Look at that, you know? And maybe you have to kind of work around that by going, I see the world as dangerous. I see people as not to be trusted. Is there a trauma response in you? You need to look at that. It's about freedom. Oh, this is why the next week, oh, this is why I'm supposed to record the next week too. Remember again, I, say, I think I say this a lot now, but <laughs> these are not necessarily linear times. It's just like, here's the next little thing and the next little thing and the next little thing. So take it all collectively. But it seems like for a lot of us, we'll flow into a time where we're discovering our own freedom, okay? It's a, it, you know, it doesn't happen overnight. <laughs> but again, they won't let go of this whole thing of labels because people find their way to the spiritual community more often than not. Uh, I'm really generalizing here because I, I don't want this to be too long a video, but they're either trying to feed on people and have power over others or they're trying to heal and they're trying to find comfort, they're trying to find their people, they're trying to find their way back to source, you know, that sort of thing. And in this community, it's a catch-all. <laughs> it's a catch-all. You have people, any, anything that's outside of mainstream as far as like a belief system or a philosophy or a way of life falls into this category. So what we end up having, I don't have arms on my chair. <laughs> This is not a good look, right? I'm just like, uh, but um, sorry, I put my, my hands on my, on my legs here. But um, what ends up happening then is that we still try to box ourselves in, even within a community that's supposed to be about freedom, 
It's supposed to be about exploration, thinking outside the box. So we start segregating ourselves into these categories. I'm a this, I'm a that. Here's what my path is and it's harder than anybody else's. We are working on freeing ourselves even from that, which isn't bad. They're coming in there wanting to say, you know, it's not, it's not bad. It was just the next step on that road, right? So we all kind of found ourselves here, but we're still kind of bringing our third dimensional ego consciousness ideas to spirituality, boxing ourselves in. And then, I, listen, I, I think it, I, I'm laughing because this example popped into my head. Everybody's always trying to get me to get a booth at one of these uh, mind body festivals. And when I go to those, I know people love those things. And yes, it is really cool. It's a great opportunity a, a lot of times to go see your favorite speakers and to be very engaged. But there's this other side to those typically where it is just like a big melting pot of all kinds of people. And they're not always well-intentioned. Not always. You might brainwash or allow yourself to be brainwashed to think that it is. And so I've never wanted to participate in those. And that is a prime example of how we sort of trap ourselves with a title or uh, a label. So what I'm getting at here is, you know, as always, be careful who you listen to. (laughs) YouTube is a perfect example. There are tons of fake, you know, readers out there. And there are tons of people who don't have your best interest at heart. They don't care. They just want to look powerful. They want to get on a trend because spirituality has become trendy. But when you're tapped into your authentic self and you're not trying to put any pressure (laughs) on who you are or got to figure out where I belong, if you just kind of, right now is the time of easing, just kind of, just be you. Everything else will kind of gravitate and go along as, as needed, okay? So be careful with that. Don't get yourselves, some people need to hear this. Don't get yourselves sucked into a cult-like mentality. Be very careful with that. And if, you know what? There are people out there who are like, I'm not in a cult. I'm not in a cult. I'm not in a cult. How many of you join some sort of movement, again, a political affiliation or a lifestyle or whatever, And then you learn everything that you can about that lifestyle and then you start following it. And all of a sudden that's your belief, right? You're still walking into another room, closing it behind you, closing the door behind you and locking it and going, program me. Instead of perhaps going, well, yeah, you know, there's this part of that philosophy that I really connect with. The other part of it, not so much. Um... You know, I, <laughs> I take a little of this and I resonate with that, but I'm not really with everybody else on believing this, this, and this. It's time to walk your own path. And it's time to not let people bully you under the guise of, I'm better than everybody because I am this. I had a person who commented on Facebook, P.S. guys, another, another little announcement on this. I am not on Facebook that much anymore. And I'm kind of not on Instagram that much anymore. Here's why. I'm walking my own authentic path. And every time I check Facebook messages, it's someone trying to get a free reading from me. Same on Instagram. And I'm tired. (laughs) I'm tired. I, for years, have given, you know, free stuff away, free readings. And if I'm going to honor myself and feel okay within me and take care of my needs, I can't be doing that. And it's draining just to read it. (laughs) It really is because, um, I don't know. Eh, I I don't know. I don't like feeling like someone's trying to pull me and use me and, you know, all that stuff. So I am backing off from it. But this example I am pulling from Facebook years ago. There was a vegan community. I'm sorry, I'm not coming for you whatsoever. You know the kind of people that I'm talking about. And actually, they misrepresent you. I can't talk. My mouth is not warmed up, I guess. (laughs) They end up misrepresenting you. But I had this commenter who said, um, oh God, you guys, okay, this was back when I posted a video, it was some guy, uh, a cat came in and he was giving the cat a piece of fish, okay? He was in a fish market. He's giving this cat a piece of fish. I don't remember why it was so cute enough to 
post it, but it must have been cute because I don't usually do that. So this person comments, oh my God, that's so sad that cats feel the need to eat fish. And I was like, what are you, <laughs> what are you talking about? Like the cat, uh, the cat's business is the cat's business. Okay, let the cat be a cat. Like if the cat wants to eat fish, the whole point of that video, I think if I remember, as I'm remembering it, was that this guy was being very caring towards this stray cat and it was adorable and you could see there was like a connection going on between the cat and the human. And this guy had to twist it to his agenda. And as soon as, you know, any kind, and I noticed a lot of people were too afraid to comment to this person and call him out on his stuff. Because why? Because we get brainwashed to think, gotta let it go. Gotta keep your vibe high. You gotta let it go. It's not authentic. It's not real. That's not the world that you live in. It's not. That's sidestepping. Now, I'm not saying go and pick a fight with everybody. I'm not saying that. But this is one of those things. I'm like, let's talk about this. What, what, where are you coming from with this? And he starts going on this whole tirade about how vegan is the right way to live. And all of you murder animals. And you're all terrible people. He's spreading venom and judging and I'm like, okay, are you going to counsel, <laughs> you want to go counsel some mountain lions? And what, he came back, I, didn't, I don't get into this, but he said, oh, classic speciesism or something like that. That was his response to it. And I'm like, you're just hateful, okay? I want to use this example and I want to put it out in this video on YouTube that, you know, these videos have been getting, depends on the week, I suppose, but it, they have been getting tens of thousands of views, which is good. If you like being here, yay, hi, welcome. <laughs> but I, I want to put that right out there at the risk of people having their egos punched in the face. I didn't mean to. But no, I, what I'm getting at here is, you know, at the risk of triggering people <laughs> and having, you know, having their egos bruised by this, this is exactly what we're talking about. You can't hide behind a group, an affiliation, and then be cruel to people or maybe cruel in this situation, well, he wasn't being cruel to me, but he was just being judgmental. He was putting this bad energy out there. Now, if you've got something to say about it, okay, but let's have a discussion, respectfully, lovingly. Not you come to the table going, I got life all figured out, and you're doing it all wrong, all of you. Ah. <laughs> now, we don't listen to those people, okay? So I hope that example made sense. Again, if you're triggered, there, there you go. That's something that is going to help you if you are willing to look at it. Unless you are completely running on the fumes of your ego and you've denied your soul and so there's not much light in you. I mean, there's not much we can do for you anyway. You have to do it for yourself. No one can save you but you. All right? I have so much more to say, but we have that next video to record. Let's get to the cards. See how it goes. I could feel a beautiful day outside. <laughs> it has been so, so muddy and so crazy and cold. And today it's supposed to be a little reasonable and the sun is out. I can feel it. Yes. <laughs> Spring, she's a coming. Yes, she's a coming. All right. Happy March, by the way. If you guys would like a personal reading with me, if you want me to tune into your energy, this is more like, like a soul coaching kind of thing, just to help you gain perspective, hopefully to bring you some peace as well, go to my website at angelsouls444.com. I do readings very differently than most. They're done digitally. Now, I know that scares some people, but don't let it scare you because actually, <laughs> actually, and I have a whole video on how I approach readings. Okay. Got sexuality here. We'll talk about it. Um, I have a whole video on that. So go check that out on my channel. But basically I do that so that I can purely, first of all, we don't have to schedule anything, but so that I can purely tune into the energy and just capture it, right? Whenever it is flowing and then it gets emailed to you and all you have to do is click on it. It opens, you download it to your computer because I do end up having to erase them from my storage. But once you have them, you can listen to them, revisit, see what happens. So again, angelsouls444.com for that. Thank you to everybody who's supporting me by getting courses on Gumroad. Um, I still have a platform at Teachable. If you wanna go check that out, whichever platform works best for you. <laughs> and of course, thank you to everybody who supports me on Patreon. All right, so we do have this first card here. Let me, 
Let me get the full story out this week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is still a lot of trauma healing for a lot of us. Oh my gosh. So we have sexuality, we have inner child, peace, and fire agate creativity. Okay, so let's get into this here. The first, the first thing I felt when this Crowquite sexuality card came out was trauma. I heard sexual trauma. Now, this doesn't, and we do have the inner child card here. This is actually the third card that came out, but we can hold these up together. Let me get organized. Uh, this is Rose Quartz, inner child. Now, for some of you, if you have something that happened in childhood that you need to heal, here you go. Lots of self-love, reparenting that inner child, letting that inner child know that he or she is safe, okay, no matter what. This also, though, they're, they're showing me someone in adulthood. So this gets into a little bit of a discussion here because as an adult, okay, you can still experience this kind of trauma. But it's not just in the way that we tend to think, okay? This can be feeling pressured to keep up with someone and their desires. It has become darn near fashionable uh, for the sexuality idea to be really pushed out there and for the boundaries to be pushed. I always say, you know, sex positivity, I think that it could be very, very healing. But you have to be in the process of healing yourself for that to be positive. Let me explain that. So if you've ever come across a person or a group of people who, you know, they're just like, oh, I'm just super open. I'm a free spirit. But then you hear them have some conversations. And I'm a Scorpio, so everybody tells me all about this part of their life. <laughs> I just came here for some soup and a good coffee, and here we are having this discussion, right? It happens to me a lot. Um, <laughs> but they start opening up, and they think that they're really edgy and interesting because they're willing to push sexual boundaries. If that's done consensually, of course, in a healthy-minded way, okay. But a lot of these people who are saying this, it's, it's a tool to help them disconnect from reality. It is not done. I'm an empath. Okay, it's not done with the spirit of exploration, like healthy exploration. It's more to avoid emotions. Some people that I've come across, it's to completely deaden anything that they have inside, to numb out. Or they've already done that and they're using this to feel something. Now, what ends up happening We still have this inner child, right? We still have this inner child, that innocent part of us that, again, if it's done in an unhealthy kind of way or if you're being in denial about what needs to be healed for you, if you're in denial about your traumas or you don't even think of, you know what I mean? Like you can have repressed memories, all those kinds of things. Your inner child is still suffering. So can you, Rose Quartz is all about love, especially self-love. And you can work with Archangel Shamuel to help you with that and Archangel Gabriel to help you with the trauma response. Archangel Raphael, any of the archangels will help you out. But, you know, are you doing these things out of self-love? Or, hold on, hold on, hold on. We have fire agate creativity. They're showing me like a burning, like almost wanting to, how can I say this? There are energies that when you come across some people and maybe they, they are in the dark arts or maybe you sense that, you know, they're, they're hiding a part of themselves. There's some dysfunction going on there for them, whether it's mental, emotional, whatever that thing is, you can feel it. And if you've ever been around that person, you feel it's, it's almost like a little fire, like, a, you know, the fire here but it's not a positive fire. It's this buzzy, it almost feels like, um, like the prickly feeling of adrenaline. Adrenaline is very human. Adrenaline is the fire that will animate a body, but it doesn't mean that it's light. Does that make sense? So 
I'm not saying, obviously, that if you've experienced a trauma, you have dark energy. I'm not saying that. What I'm getting at here is that when we start to not let this beautiful self-love come through, okay, especially if you're using this as a tool of escape, there's a different kind of energy that gets released in you. And they're showing me it's like eating junk food. Yeah, it'll give you a hit of energy. Yeah, you'll, you know, this is the same with, um, now hang with me, guys. I'm sorry. Now you're all going to be like, you're attacking all of us. Everybody says that every week. So I've come to just be like, whatever. Um, but <laughs> adrenaline junkies, you're like this too. You love that little hit of like fire, right? And like, But it's a very human kind of thing, right? That adrenaline rush. Uh, it's the same kind of idea. It's not going to feed you long term. Eating, okay, so I said eating junk food. Talking about sexuality, talking about, you know, adrenaline junkies. All it's going to do eventually is push down the original fire, the actual fire that is you. This almost gives me, this almost gives me um, the feeling like, if, let's talk food supply as an example. So we have real food and then there are like genetically engineered food. So we're trying to like make like fake food. We have real food. Right? So we all have like real light that we can work with, but somehow we think we're not deserving of that or it doesn't apply to us. It applies to everybody. Everybody has a beautiful soul if you allow it to come forward. Sure. So maybe we think that we're not worthy of it, but we're trying to recreate it. We think we're all on our own and we have to make this other kind of fire happen to create the life that we want. This is the week when we talk about authenticity, you're letting all of that fake stuff go. And maybe you look at it and go, you know what? I have been using my sexuality to escape. You know what? I do use my sexuality to feel accepted. Maybe I allow too much. Maybe I don't set enough boundaries because someone might say, oh, you're no fun. P.S. That time is coming to an end. <laughs> so again, healthy expression, beautiful. Using it as, a, as an escape route, not going to help you. Okay, does that make sense? So there's a lot of inner child healing and self-love that needs to come about. Here's another interesting secondary message here. All right, <laughs> we have creativity over here and sexuality. So this is sacral no glare, thank you. Um, this is sacral chakra healing, okay? So maybe you want to be working on that. But this isn't, see, everybody tends to work on things, and I've done this myself. We tend to work on things so we can get something. I'm going to work on my sacral chakra so I can finally lose all this weight. It's getting serious. Now that I'm over 40, I was sitting <laughs> the other day, and I'm like, why does my back feel funny? And I twisted, and another roll of fat happened, and I was like, oh, no. <laughs> This is, the back rolls are getting to be too much, okay? And I never used to have that when I was younger. So I'm exploring how to, I didn't beat myself up. And I want to offer this because um, it's what I'm talking about, about authenticity. The authentic response was, this doesn't feel natural to me. And this is kind of alerting me that my body is changing and that I need to find new ways of feeding my body and moving my body that works with who I am right now. So... P.S. I've been doing the class, uh, Taryn Toomey. Love. <laughs> it is so my gig, okay? It is so my gig. I love. So it's not done with the spirit of something needs to be fixed. It's I need to give my body a different kind of attention. And I'll let it be what it wants to be. And that means I go shopping and get clothes that fit me now and get rid of that wardrobe that's like four sizes too small. You know what I'm saying? Like I just allow myself to be me right now. So that is kind of what we're talking about here as well, honoring yourself for where you are. Now back on the sacral chakra, if we're talking about, I was saying, you know, you don't want to just heal it just so you can get something, right? Because that's you still trying to play the human game. And there's this human fear of not having enough, of not being enough. And we're kind of, we're like, it's like we're starving. And every time there's a chance of energy, there's a chance of being fed, we grab it up. Now, if you think about the feeder souls, they're the ones that are starving the most. 
They're always feeding. They're always trying to take energy because they don't see their own. They don't see their own light, right? I think there's a very big message here with these two cards, especially. So there's the sacral chakra and giving your inner child a chance, okay, to heal. You can heal that part of you and heal those triggers, but let yourself be who you are. Don't see yourself as needing to be fixed, okay? It's not about that. So we have skull sight peace. I believe this was the second card that came out. So being at peace, finding the peace, this is the key back to that light that we talk about all the time. You're not, you're not a failure, you know? I have dark moments too, guys. Of course I do. Especially when my body is fluctuating the way that it is. It has other sort of uh, mood <laughs> <laughs> the mood flows all over the place and, you know, the, the detoxifying part of it and, you know, having the physical symptoms around that. So I know what it is to get into that space of, I don't get any of this. I mean, and I'm an angel medium, you know, like I sit down and I do these videos, but I, I set the intention to bring the messages in and I try to apply them to my own life, but I have to go be human. I still have that job to do as well, <laughs> right? So it doesn't mean my life is perfect. The angels don't live for you. They just guide while you learn your own lessons. So the whole point here is that if we can, even in those darkest moments, find our way to peace, okay? And tr don't try so hard. That's what they're saying, don't try so hard. Just, just allow yourself to get open, <laughs> all right? Open and a lot of self-care. Now, I'll give you an example. When was this? Was it last week? I don't know, I was having a very deep conversation with one of my siblings and something came up that at first I numbed out because it was something I had forgotten. And then the more I started talk or not talking about it, but thinking about it after the talk, thinking about it is what I meant to say. Um, the more it just kind of started, I started feeling myself go down that road that I had before when I remembered some other traumatic things when I was in my twenties. That's when I really started breaking that open and working on that. And I had a moment, a realization where I'm like, I'm not an unsafe child. I'm an adult and I'm still feeling this and it's real. So for right now, I am going to figure out what, what would make me feel comforted right now. And you know what? I went and I took a shower. <laughs> I went and took a nice hot shower and just let the water pour over me. And I wasn't quite ready to talk to that inner child yet. I wasn't quite there yet. I just had to, it was like you know, triage. You just got to take care of what's happening right here. And then I went to sleep. And when I got up in the morning, I was very aware that there's the innocence part of me that maybe we get kind of trained to think that that innocence goes away. It doesn't go away, it gets silenced. And we always have the opportunity to lift that inner child up and say, go ahead and talk. What are the fears? What do you need to have right now? And I had that moment. Now, it doesn't have to be super grandiose. I know in my situation it wasn't. It was a sort of, you know, let's call it a far away kind of conversation. But, um, you know, I, I was able to reconnect without overthinking it. Again, without putting this whole like human thing around it to make it mean something. I let it just be what it is. And I was okay. I was really okay. Better than okay. I was like, I get it. The innocence never goes away. It doesn't get damaged. It just gets silenced. And we always have the power to let the voice come back. Okay, let's get the color card. Don't go anywhere yet. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Let's see what else we can offer you. Final thoughts for the week. Okay. 
Burgundy, awaken your passion, the number is 10. So this is saying, you know, redirect some of those fiery energies that you have. Are you putting it into, I don't know, like, like again, going back to that human way of expressing the adrenaline rush or trying to hide from what's really going on inside or, you know, not knowing what your passion is. How about that? This is a week of discovery. So this might be a week, if you overthink it, it's not going to work. Oh, got sapphire on the bottom here. <laughs> it says regenerate your body, number's 38 here. So, you know, there's a chance to figure out another way to be happy, another way to come into your peace, another way of realizing that you're not alone. You don't have to keep creating a false light to feed yourself. You're already equipped with divine light. You just need to rediscover it. All right. So we're going to leave it there, guys. I'm sending you so much love and take care.